The war in Europe had ended. The Axis powers had been beaten, and two of the leaders responsible for the largest war the world had ever seen had perished. Mussolini was executed in Italy, and Hitler had committed suicide prior to Germany's surrender. Shortly before Germany's surrender, U.S. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt had passed away, leaving Harry Truman to take over the war in the Pacific. With the war in Europe over, the United States was able to give the war in the Pacific their full attention. In the early outset, with the Allies focusing on beating Hitler and Mussolini in Europe, the Japanese had early advances in the war in the Pacific. They had conquered most of the South Pacific, advancing all the way down towards Australia, invading and conquering many islands and territories, including the Dutch East Indies, Guam, the Wake Islands, New Guinea, and the Philippines. They had even taken one of the islands off the coast of Alaska. On the mainland, they had conquered Hong Kong, Burma, French Indochina, Thailand, and much of China. Six months following the attack on Pearl Harbor, the Japanese had a larger empire than that of the Third Reich. General Douglas MacArthur would play a vital role in the Pacific, but would suffer early defeats. In the Philippines, MacArthur battled the Japanese for three months, but in March of 1942, he was forced to retreat from the islands. When he left, MacArthur pledged that he shall return one day. In the spring of 1942, the United States began to rally an offensive to stem the Japanese war machine. Lieutenant Colonel James Doolittle led 16 United States bombers in what was known as Doolittle's Raid. The bombers were B-25 bombers, and they were a success in the raids. Doolittle's Raid successfully bombed Tokyo and other Japanese cities. The raids bolstered the spirits of Americans at home, as well as our soldiers in the Pacific. While fighting in Europe, the main Allied forces for the United States were the British and the Soviets. In the Pacific, however, our main ally was the Australians. The Battle of the Coral Sea was a significant clash between the Allies and the Japanese. The Battle of the Coral Sea had stopped the Japanese on their way towards Australia. This battle was the first time the Japanese had been stopped since Pearl Harbor, and the five-day battle was fought exclusively by aircraft. Not a single surface shot was fired by either ships. The Battle of Midway was also another significant battle in finally stopping the Japanese advances. The clash at Midway was not a secret to the Americans, who had broken the Japanese code and knew that they were advancing towards Midway. Admiral Chester Nimitz was the commander of the American naval fleet in the Pacific, and after breaking the code, he had sent American planes out to surprise the Japanese fleet. The Japanese losses were severe. They lost four aircraft carriers, a cruiser, and 250 planes. The Battle of Midway was a turning point in the War of the Pacific. As the Allies began to have success in the Pacific, the Japanese began to up their defense. The Japanese began to employ a new tactic, the kamikaze. Kamikazes were suicide plane attacks where pilots would crash planes full of explosives into American ships. As the offensive continued, the United States would recapture most of the Philippines, and they began to think about how to push the Japanese back and ultimately think about how to launch an attack on the main island of Japan. The United States turned towards the island of Iwo Jima, an island that could possibly serve as a launching spot towards the Japanese mainland, but also an area with over 20,000 Japanese troops defending it. More than 6,000 Marines would die taking Iwo Jima, but ultimately only 200 Japanese survived. The United States has successfully island hopped through the Pacific and was closing in on Japan. The United States Marines would mount another significant invasion on the island of Okinawa. The Japanese, in a last-ditch effort, would launch almost 2,000 kamikaze attacks at Allied ships. Once ashore, the fighting raged on. The battle would end with over 7,000 American casualties. However, the Japanese casualties would be over 110,000. The battles of Iwo Jima and Okinawa would not only be significant United States victories, but they would also alert President Truman and other Allied leaders of what they would face 
should they mount an attack against the Japan Japanese main island. If the Japanese fought so fiercely for these two small islands, imagine how hard they would fight for the main island of Japan. Before his death, Roosevelt had authorized scientists to study the possibilities of using a nuclear reaction in a weapon, after a letter he received from Albert Einstein. The Manhattan Project was led by Robert J. Oppenheimer and involved over 600,000 Americans working on the top secret project. When he became president, even Truman, who was the former vice president, did not know about the project. After some successful tests, the weapon was loaded onto the Enola Gay, a B-29 bomber. The bomb that was loaded on it was called Little Boy, and its destination was going to be Hiroshima. In 43 seconds, the city would be mostly annihilated, yet the Japanese still did not surrender. Three days later, a second bomb, codenamed Fat Man, was dropped on Nagasaki, leveling half the city. The bomb would lead to Emperor Hirohito finally issuing a formal surrender, but not before 200,000 Japanese civilians would perish due to injuries or radiation from the atomic bombs. On September 2, 1945, the formal surrender of the Empire of Japan would take place on board the USS Missouri. This day would be known as VJ Day or Victory in Japan Day. The ceremony was attended by many troops and high-ranking Allied officials. General Douglas MacArthur would give a speech to the crowd, and as troops proudly watched, MacArthur, Nimitz, and Japanese officials would sign the declaration and finally end World War II. While the fighting may have stopped, there were still a lot of things for Allied leaders to consider such as what to do with the island of Japan following their surrender and how to rebuild war-torn Europe. In fact, Allied leaders had started thinking about these plans while Germany was beginning to retreat and FDR was still alive at the Yalta Conference. At the conference, it was clear that Roosevelt, Churchill, and Stalin all had very different ideas of how they wanted to treat Germany once they surrendered. Stalin was upset over the heavy Russian casualties and wanted Germany divided into occupation zones for Allied control. Churchill, Churchill strongly disagreed after seeing how the harsh treatment from World War I had led to a new world conflict decades later. The world leaders would ultimately compromise at Yalta, and they agreed to a temporary division and occupation of Germany, but free elections in liberated territories as well as in Soviet-controlled Poland and other Eastern European nations. In the Pacific, the United States would militarily occupy Japan under the control of General MacArthur. The United States would try high-ranking Japanese military officials, and seven including Hideki Tojo were sentenced to death. The American military would occupy Japan for seven years, and during that time MacArthur helped Japan rebuild economically and also transform their government as well. To this day, the Japanese Constitution is still known as the MacArthur Constitution. The United States decided to try and help rebuild Western Europe. To do so, they employed the Marshall Plan, which gave significant funds to countries that were in Western Europe, coincidentally countries that were not communist. The plan gave money and supplies to the war-torn countries of Europe. Stalin did not like the plan and looked at it as the United States trying to buy friends and allies. It was true that the United States funded these Western European countries in hopes of aiding their economy and hopes that they would not be lured into communism or socialism, which would ultimately mean to be under Soviet Union control. The Marshall Plan and the divide in political views and plans for post-war Europe began to start our next conflict, one that would last much longer the Cold War with the Soviet Union.